So hello everyone. It's uh, really a great honor for us. Today we have uh, Dr. Randa Tabah, who is a cardiologist who studied in Holy Spirit University of Catholic Lebanon, who is working at Notre Dame Discourse University Hospital, Chance, who is uh, a budding talent in the EP, and she's also interested also in uh, imaging as well. And uh, we have had a lot of discussions about various case discussions as well. And she's very, very keen into EP. So, and I'm pretty confident that uh, Dr. Randa is going to have a bright future in the field of cardiology as well. So we are keen to learn from you about the role of imaging, especially in the diagnosis of uh, the corona patients. Thank you so much and over to you. Thank you, doctor, for uh, this uh, presentation. So uh, we're going to discuss today the role of imaging in the diagnosis uh, of COVID-19 uh, patients. First of all, uh, in a small introduction, Okay, so uh, as we know, several cases of pneumonia with unknown origin emerged uh, in Wuhan in China and were reported uh, by the WHO on December, uh, on December 31, 2019. But on January 7, 2020, the coronavirus was confirmed and the outbreak started and it is the COVID-19, the name COVID-19. So uh, this, um, this is global distribution of the disease, which is a multi-systemic disease, can affect the heart as well as the lungs and other organs. So to diagnose uh, this disease, first as a clinical presentation, the most common signs, uh, it is fever, dry cough, fatigue, dyspnea, Less common signs as my myalgia, atralgia, headache, sore throat. On physical exam, as we know, we can examine the lungs. We can see uh, if we have some rails, if we have some crackles, dullness in percussion. And of course, the most important uh, finding are the radiological finding. First on chest X-ray, which is not very specific, and we're going to discuss this. Then on the thoracic CT, and we're gonna discuss the lung ultrasounds and it is used, uh, it's used in these cases. Uh, then uh, in the diagnosis, the most important, it is the laboratory test. Lymphopenia is an important sign as well as elevated CRP, normal procalcitonin levels. And the gold standard is the PCR. It's turnaround time, uh, it needs six to 72 hours to have the uh, results around 15 to 71 percent and the specificity is around 100 percent so to to go about to talk about the radiological uh, diagnosis first we're gonna start with anatomy okay so always start to go to the skin from scratch i say so the basic anatomy so it stands to anatomy. It is the pulmonary lobule, which is uh, of, it's a of the pulmonary structure and function. It's approximately one to two centimeter in diameter and contains five to 15 pulmonary acini that contains alveoli for gas exchange. So we have a pattern in diffuse lung disease. But the most important part of this is the high attenuation. We have the ground glass opacities. We have the consolidation, which is the most important, and you're gonna see. And there are other patterns that we don't really use. We don't really have in this uh, type of uh, viruses. Okay. So as a as a basic term to describe uh, these patterns, first the ground glass opacities the consolidation, the air bronchogram, and the aging pattern, the ground glass opacities. It is important because it is a hazy increased opacity
possibility of the long with preservation of bronchial and vast very important here. And this is a progressive alveolar filling which produces the, the ground the glass opacities. Some other uh, diagnosis could uh, give us a ground glass opacity, like infection, edema, diffuse alveolar damage, hemorrhage, aspiration, all of that, even sarcoidosis, some, some chronic uh, cases like sarcoidosis, alveolar proteinosis, and all of that, okay? The consolidation, the consolidation, it's uh, to differentiate it from the ground glass uh, opacity, we have here in the consolidation, we, op we have, an op it obscures the margin of the vessels. But the, as I said, the ground glass, we have a preservation of the bronchial and vascular margin. The consolidation, the, this is an exudative product of disease that replaces the alveolar air renting the lung solid. And also the air bronchogram, it is a pattern of filled bronchi on a background of opaque uh, airless lung, okay? The signs imply the patency of airway and evacuation of alveolar air by absorption, as in atelectasis, or replacement, as in pneumonia, or the combination of these things. We have also the crazy paving pattern, which is the second interlobular and intralobular lines superimposed on a background of ground glass opacities. Uh, it is also reported in alveolar proteinosis. proteinosis okay? So now to talk about how to differentiate how, uh, chest X-ray versus CT, what is the most important to do? The chest X-ray is uh, insens insensitive in the early disease uh, so when, when a patients come in the early course of the disease, the finding on chest X-ray are not so important. But alternatively, after we have chest X-ray will be important and we will have some uh, lung abnormalities at this time. But of course, the CT has a greater sensitivity for early pneumonic changes. So the chest X-ray can be useful for assessing the disease prog progression, for alternative diagnosis as, as lower pneumonia, suggestive of bacterial superinfection, as pneumonitis and pleural effusion also, okay? So here uh, we have a case of a male, 44 years old, uh, with fever, fatigue, and uh, as you see, he's uh, on treatment, this patient. We see first the infiltrations are uh, more peripheral, then, with time, it goes more, more to the center, as we see on, uh, on the chest x-rays. And this is another patient, a 69-year-old uh, woman with some chest pain and coughing. She has the first presentation. After four days, she's in ARDS, and unlikely she died uh, 11 days after admission. Okay? So... Now we're gonna discuss the typical finding on, uh, on CT scan. First, the, the ground glass opacities and consolidation, occasionally the crazy paving. It is also patchy, it's not uh, symmetrical. It is bilateral and could be unilateral early. We can first have uh, some pneumonia unilaterally, then we have the spreading things as in ARDS, okay? It, it is basal, most predominantly, peripheral, with rounded nodular in up to 50% of cases. The atypical finding in this uh, virus, we have uh, the mediastinal lymphadenopathy, some pleural effusions, very atypical, multiple small pulmonary nodules, pneumothorax, and uh, cavitation. So findings according to the stage of the disease. We have the ultra early stage, one to two weeks after exposure. The early stage, one to three days after uh, symptoms, start of the symptoms. And the rapid progression uh, stage, day three to seven of symptomatic presentation. The consolidation stage, seven to 14 days of symptomatic presentation. And the dissipation stage, it is two to three weeks after the onset of symptoms. 
So here we are gonna discuss the CT finding of each stage. The ultra early stage, uh, when the patient is still asymptomatic with negative labs but positive throat uh, swab, we have uh, some single or double or focal uh, ground glass opacities, patchy consolidation opacities, and the pulmonary nodules encircled by the ground glass uh, opacities, and some air bronchograms. In the early stage, we have, uh, it is one to three days after clinical presentation. CT scan uh, could show single or multiple scattered patchy or uh, agglomerated uh, ground glass opacities separated by honeycomb-like or grid-like thickened of the interlobular septa. On the rapid progression stage, three to seven days uh, after symptomatic presentation, the CT scan shows uh, large light consolidative opacities and air bronchogram. And, and the, the consolidation stage, it is seven to, uh, to 14 days of the symptomatic presentation. We have a reduction of density and size of the consolidative opacities, but uh, maybe also seen in this stage. Dissipation stage, it is two to three weeks after onset of symptoms. And the, it range, uh, of, uh, it, the range of lesion is further reduced. We have the patchy consolidation or the strip-like opacities and the grid-like uh, thickening of the interlobular septum. Here we have a presentation of a patient with lesions and after treatment, the patients uh, become uh, finally better, of course. So uh, we can see at first uh, we have uh, the ground glass uh, opacities and uh, and some uh, the color overlay it is it is more it's better seen and this uh, reconstruction and after uh, some time the patient is better and here as we see the 3D reconstruction it is good and beautiful okay. Now uh, we're going to talk about the sensitivity compared to PCR. We have a lot of studies that compare these two uh, entities. First, in the Fang et al., we have uh, a sensitivity of the PCR which is 71%. Although the sensitivity of the initial CT scan it is more, it is 98%. And 72% of the they had a typical, typical CT finding, okay? In the Bernheim et al., we saw that we have uh, only 4% of patients at day 6 uh, to 12, they had the uh, normal CT scan. And the Xi et al., uh, in 3% of patients with initial negative PCR, they have a positive finding on CT. So the diagnosis could be done from CT even if you have a negative PCR. For the differential diagnosis, we have a lot of disease that uh, has some uh, similarities, okay? As we say, we have the uh, pneumonia in HIV patients here, but it has a diffuse bilateral ground glass appearance, which is different from uh, from the uh, coronavirus, which is more patchy and uh, not like this diffuse. Okay, and with, with the recurrent, uh, with the cryptogenic organizing uh, pneumonia, patient with recurrent pneumonia shows uh, parenchymal uh, opacities with, character, which, with characteristically peripheral distribution bilaterally. And also the pulmonary related from pulmonary edema, pulmonary edema is more central and so uh, it's more peripheral than central, okay? Some pitfalls. Uh, first, we have uh, when patient is moving in the high uh, resolution CT scan, we can have some uh, false positive finding as the pseudo ground uh, glass opacities, so, uh, pseudo bronchiectasis or double fissures. And uh, also the pulmonary vascular disease. Uh, in the in case of uh, thromboembolic disease, the appearance uh, of the lung 
So we will have the mosaic uh, attenuation, which is uh, due to uh, it's the result of uh, a reduction in perfusion in the distribution of the occluded pulmonary vessels. We can also find uh, some scoring for, uh, for the reports of the CT scan, as we see here, uh, the CT scan report stands. And we have the CORATS classification. CORATS classification, uh, uh, the finding on the CT scan can give us an idea about, uh, about the, the, the highly uh, suspicion of the disease. So if we have a typical finding on CT scan, it is uh, highly suspected to have coronavirus or COVID-19, okay? So the American College uh, of uh, Radiology said that generally the finding on CT imaging in COVID-19 uh, are not, uh, it could end up with other imaging, like Monza, H1N1, SARS, and MERS. And the Society of uh, thoracic radiology, they stated that it is important to use CT scan only for symptomatic for CT scan, okay? There were some, uh, some concerns about, with, the, with the Flaschner uh, society. We had some uh, scenarios, like if we have a mild feature consistent with COVID-19, and any pre of uh, COVID-19 also, the test is not available and the, the access of uh, probability of the pre-test is very moderate to high with risk factors to do the imaging. It is more indicated. If it's not, we can monitor uh, the patient. And the probability is low, imaging is not indicated, we can monitor only the patient. And if we have some worsening uh, respiratory status, we can do the, the imaging. Okay, so imaging patient with suspected uh, COVID-19 and mild features, unless we have some of this uh, program. But it is indicated uh, and it's importantly indicated in worsening uh, status. And in a resource-constrained uh, environment, imaging is indicated for medical triage of patients with suspected COVID-19 who presented with moderate to severe clinical features and the high pre-test probability of the disease. So as a take-home message about the CT scan, infection with COVID-19 produces acute lung injury, manifesting as predominantly, predominantly as patchy. It's not symmetrical is bilateral and consolidation. And evolution and self-limited self course is large uh, with organonia pattern. R uh, is the, the gold standard for this, uh, for this disease. And after two days of symptoms, CT scan can exhibit a good sensitivity, but of course the specificity is, uh, is variable because due to the radiologist's scan, of course. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Randa, for giving us a, a really good overview of the imaging modalities which can be used. Uh, we not only learned about the different imaging modalities which is being used for the diagnosis, for example, like the X-rays, the CD scan. You, we also discussed about the ground glass opacification changes and the consolidation changes, which can be uh, used also for the staging of the disease and also in uh, brief about the beautiful 3D reconstruction as well. Uh, you in fact also compared very well about the, uh, the different modalities um, which are used for the imaging of such patients as well. The important differential diagnosis because these uh, differential diagnosis is very much important like especially someone like me who is not a pulmonologist, I'm, I really struggle uh, whenever I have to interpret those CT scans or these imaging tools. So the differential diagnosis tools which can be used for uh, such patients and also the very important, the limitations. So it's not like any tool can be any uh, for any patients at any stage as well. And one of the really nice things which I today learned from your talk as well uh, which you discussed in your take-home message about the 
uh, how to use the imaging for the risk of prognosis as well for such kind of patients as well. So uh, one of my questions for you is, uh, you have already given us a really detailed overview about those patients. One of my questions, how is the situation for those COVID-19 patients in Lebanon and uh, how are you all dealing with it? Uh, actually, in Lebanon for the COVID-19, it's stable for now. Uh, we have some uh, new cases every day, six to eight cases every day. It is the, every 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 uh, case that we know. It is we have a tracing for all the the people who, who were in contact with the, with the, with this case, and uh, they they're now they're going to do some more tests so uh, they can uh, trace all uh, the patients with coronavirus and uh, we did a, an early lockdown for the country and actually maybe in 10 days we will do some unlock and try to see if uh, the situation will be better for uh, for our patients uh, in cardiology we will do only the the urgent cases if we have some urgent patients with chest pain we do the PCR, a negative PCR, then we see if we do a, a cast or not. We do a case-by-case case, uh, decision in these cases. Thank you again for That's sharing. It. Thank you so much for again for sharing those insights. These insights are very helpful as uh, you already said it as well the, about the how the virus in, started literally from Wuhan in China. Uh, so initial days, the lockdown was one of the key things which was being implemented by governments all around the world. And with passage of time as well, we are able to see that a lot of uh, countries are uh, considering a little let go of uh, phenomenon, like uh, they are trying to relax the, uh, the lockdown, especially which we have been seeing in not just the European countries, the Asian countries. And, uh, Lebanon and uh, other countries as well in the Asia Pacific region as well. This is something uh, we all are going through a very dynamic stage as well of the disease. The di disease has been progressing in a different way. So that's why the role of imaging as well, it has been an important role. For example, at the different stages, how to take care of this disease. And Dr. Randa has been really kind to explain to us in a very easy to understand, very lucid way to uh, how to use this uh, wonderful tool, which is there in the hands of physicians and the healthcare professionals as well, to be able to use for the benefit of those patients and also uh, the entire society as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.